Good morning and welcome. Thanks for being here today. Uh, we're excited to share a little bit of um, extreme success uh, this year that we're excited to share with you. So fundamentals of express car wash success. We're going to talk about some basic principles and how applied to express car washing can achieve incredible results. Um, a uh, little bit of just copyright information talks about that. Our, our product that we actually sell is an intellectual property based uh, system uh, process of operating the car wash. I'm going to start today a little bit differently and talk a little bit about just some of our company values to set the stage for uh, how we've achieved these results. We, we believe this plays a key part. So uh, one of our philosophies is helping others become successful and share our experience. We've already been successful in the business today. It's our mission to help others. Uh, do that. We believe, or we live our lives on the, the bleeding edge, we call it. That's the, uh, the area before the leading edge, which is a painful place to be sometimes in innovation. But again, we have corporate stores. We can innovate and test things and, and really be ahead of the cutting edge. We believe in blue ocean strategy. It's a philosophy where um, you, you play on a higher level and you don't necessarily do what other people do. You kind of try to do the opposite of what other people do. Uh, we also believe in disruptive technology. Uh, today, the industry is, is really a failure the way I see it as a whole compared to any other retail uh, industries, uh, retail businesses. And so we're trying to shake up what's a very fragmented industry. We also believe in the idea of uh, constant and never-ending improvement and that perfect is never good enough and, and we keep continuing to try to uh, make it better every time. We also believe motorists are the stakeholders. At the end of the day, uh, they're the ones paying the bills. We, um, our clients are typically the owner operator, but we uh, believe all, all about the motorist and experience uh, in the motorist. And we believe in contribution to the industry and how we can raise the bar and have a rising tide where what we do uh, contributes to other people, maybe even competitors. Together, we all rise together uh, in the industry. And these values, I think, uh, contribute to how we've achieved these results um, and uh, in integrated into our operations. Just a little background on how we got here today, literally into this seminar, I'll share with you some history. We started washing in 1969 when my grandfather started. Uh, over the years, opened some washes, built some washes, sold a few. Uh, in 2001, we reinvented car wash equipment by making a round look of the arch and the idea was to create a sexy looking car wash in a way where prior to that it was industrial um, and that was in the full service industry and business back then when customers weren't in the car and it didn't have to look nice and as express washing evolved and we've always been express washing for 30 plus years 40 years but uh, the industry was evolving into express washing where the customer's in the vehicle and it needs to look nice and so we invented the round arch design um, we went through in 2010 a, a design of models. There's different models I'll share with you today and we try to package models. What you'll realize in the car wash industry is there's very few that are alike and we went to try to change that and create some standards. In 2012 we went through a phase of intense design, some of which I'll share with you today about doors and windows and uh, specifications of building to make an ultimate car wash. In 20, uh, 2013 we share with you the five factors we called it. 2014, we showed you details in and out of this facility. In 2015, we applied it. Uh, everything I said the previous years, we applied in our own corporate store. We call it a Waverly location. And it washed 419,000 cars uh, in its first year. This year, it's our mission to try to duplicate that <laughs> and try to help others duplicate that as well. So that's what we're working on now. Just a refresher on the five factors I talked about in 2013. We talked about curb appeal and how investing in the exterior and the look of a facility increases capture rate and it's basically like a marketing investment up front. We talked about optimized operations where when you get things right, it just works better. Uh, things like doors and windows and being able to go places where you need to go in the wash. Uh, we talked about the product, the ultimate outcome of clean, shiny, dry vehicle long-term sustainability, how investing in equipment is one of your biggest assets and how to manage it and reduce depreciation. We talked about cost appropriate design and how to invest the right amount of money to get the best return. Uh, not always investing the least amount of money but getting a maximum return. In 2014, in this session we talked about the details, all about the last 10% of perfection. We talked about things like the left in right out layout we call it and the down in down out design. Uh, we talked about win-win investment strategies on how you can 
uh, save money up front and save money on going and trying to hit those optimal points in construction. Again, we applied it in our own facility. This is some pictures of the location I referred to as Waverly. It was our sixth location at that time um, and uh, achieving some staggering, incredible results. And, and my plan today is to, 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 again, try to explain how. I want to give you some facts just so you understand the importance of these principles I'm going to share with you today and, and understand the success of this facility. We opened December 18th of 2014. Three months later, in the month of March of 2015, we washed 50,000 cars in one month. We think probably a world record. Uh, that was not free washes, that was paid washes. We did a little marketing up front in December and, and redeemed in January, February. We hit optimal weather. We had a, a base of club members, I'll explain more later. But 50,000 cars achieved. In the first full year in business of 2015, we washed 419,000 uh, cars. January 23rd, 2016, an email from my sister. We're blessed with great weather today. Yesterday, one of the forecasts, great pleasure to inform you that we broke a 30 plus year record. The record of total cars washed was held by Tom Essenberg, 2505 and 2506. He did that back to back uh, two days many, many years ago. Yesterday, the record was broken. The Waverly team washed 2601. That evening, on January 23rd, that night, they broke that record again, back to back. 2639 cars washed on the screen there, two days back to back. February 6th, just a few days later, new company record, 210 cars in one hour, our peak hour we've ever washed. February 19th, just a couple days after that, broke the record again, new day record, 2913 cars in a single day. So numbers are great, but we want to not hit records. We want to do it all the time. So we put on a push with our team for consistency. And how can we not just hit peak hours? We want to hit consistent peak hours. And they hit nine consecutive hours in a row, exceeding 190 cars an hour washed. Now, of course, dollars are the true indicator, not numbers and car counts. And total wash revenue for 2015 was $2.5 million uh, in the first year open. A total car count of 419,000 is a $6.11 net average. There's different ways to calculate ticket average. Uh, we do the bottom, bottom, bottom number, meaning after employee washes, free washes, coupons, uh, rewashes, things like that. That's dollars divided by washes. Now, another uh, interesting phenomenon a little bit that we're trying to understand is that we had three locations in 2014, and the true test was what is our citywide uh, car count? We had 532,000 cars washed between three locations in 2014. This is a city where we, um, one city of our operations. In 2015, we added the fourth location with a, a total car count in that city of 855,000 or a net increase of 323, knowing we were gonna take a little bit from some of the existing stores or increase of 60% in car count by building a fourth location nearly on top of ourselves. This is a little bit of history. I'm gonna share with you some principles today this relates to, this is Holland, this is our hometown, 128,000 people in that circle. Um, that's a 10 mile radius around the city. Uh, it's a small town for the most part, uh, uh, a suburb of really a larger city, um, about 40 minutes away, but this is Holland. These are the locations of our three uh, existing locations before we go to the new site. We added a fourth location right there really to replace uh, the one that's right down the street right here, knowing we were going to shut that down eventually. Today it's still operating. Um, and with that addition of that fourth location, of course, those all those sites are within a two-mile radius circle. These are not small tunnels. They're not inbound automatics. There's a 180-foot tunnel here and 330-foot tunnels. And by adding that fourth location, we increased our car count 60% uh, citywide year over year. So now you understand this is important. Uh, I believe you too can achieve these results and that's our quest to figure out how to replicate this consistently. And I believe it's all about fundamentals executed properly. The first fundamental I'm gonna talk about is branding. Um, a brand is not just a logo, a website, or your business cards, and it's, a, it's an experience. And branding is one of the elements that we think helped us get to this level. Uh, Multi-site environment uh, is important. That's where we get brand value that contribute to each other. Um, it's not something that can happen overnight. Our washes were found in 1969, so we've been building brand for many, many years and building a reputation to tie to that brand. 
So when we opened this new location, we had club members and we had raving fan customers right out the gate. Uh, in fact, I think it was our third day open was our first thousand car day. So we had a jump start there. Consistency is what people like about brands, Southwest Airlines, McDonald's, maybe not good, but very consistent. And that connects to your brand. Experience is a key uh, to create, to trigger people's memory to a positive brand. The environment, we'll talk more about how we try to make the experience going through the car wash to enjoy, to enlighten people and to get them excited and that can tie to your brand. The building itself we've realized is a brand. We have a very iconic looking facilities and we realized that um, between two locations that are about 35 minutes apart, we have a little crossover. They actually have different brands on the facilities and people recognize that as a brand itself. I always suggest avoiding themed car washes or a local targeted or a direction name of your car wash if you plan to build multiple locations. Uh, okay, Cactus Car Wash doesn't work well in Canada. Uh, you want to be aware of things like that or location specific. University Car Wash, you might need to be careful if you want to build locations. The downtown are not a good idea if you're going to build on, in multiple areas. So brand is important. We use themes throughout the wash. Here you see the red balls. That's just kind of a thought idea we came up with to create an iconic look that people would remember and tie to that brand. Even if they don't know the name of the car wash, they can identify through the building and the, uh, and the balls. Uh, we brand throughout the tunnel. We hammer the customer with as much as we can, uh, both services as well as our logo, several times through the wash to keep reminding them of that brand. The next fundamental and my favorite and probably the biggest um, failure at most existing car washes today, the, the, where everybody's falling short, and I think our biggest strength where we achieve this is processing. The world is changing very fast. Big will not beat small anymore. It will be the fast beating the slow. Processing requires two things, ability and skill. Ability is having the right equipment, uh, wraparound brushes that can follow cars at 210 cars an hour, enough dryers to dry a car when you're going that fast, having things in the facility like our down in, down out design that we can load quickly and we can dump people out the end as fast as we can and the bright wash bay makes the transition of light uh, seamless, things like that. And then it takes skill. Uh, many people that would have uh, that many cars in line have difficulty getting them through. So the skill is the talent of the team, ability to be non-dramatic. Um, today we have, uh, now that we've done this, you know, 2,900 cars in a day, uh, when we get a 1,500 to 2,000 car day, they look like, man, easy, it's, uh, it's manageable, it's not chaotic, it's not dramatic. That takes talent and, uh, and skill with the team. Other things that relate to processing, a three-lane point of sale system uh, that feeds the tunnel. That way if somebody has a fumble at one of the lanes, we never miss a car in the queue. We can't afford to miss a car at those speeds, so three lanes keep it full. We wouldn't go two lanes typically if we don't have to unless it's a site restriction, but uh, two lanes you might have occasional where you miss a car. In four lanes, we don't like because the car moves forward too slowly. So you're in the three lane, you're moving forward once every three cars. In a four lane, it gets to be like you're not progressing. Streamline menu design. Many menus in the industry are, are not very well designed, and, and that costs uh, processing time. The loader is the MVP. We can tell instantly who we have loading, and today we qualify and train loaders to a certain level of training before they're allowed to load cars. It sounds like a simple task. It's not. It's the difference of 160 cars an hour or 210 cars an hour. So when we have a busy day, it's all about the loader. Um, we never would prep the car. Uh, at these speeds, we don't have time to prep the car. We don't need to prep the car. We do it automatic with an auto prep arch, we call it. And uh, at these processing speeds, I'll show you in a minute, cars just fly in. Oh, sorry. Processing uh, creates volume. I want you to think about that for a second. It's, I mean that in a literal sense. Processing creates volume. Not just that the cars are on the site and you're going to get them through faster. It's the customer knows that they can get through fast all the time and they make a conscious decision to wash more often. They maybe have five minutes on the way to work. They're going to pull in because they know that they can get through in and out quick. Maximizing the big days is a principle that it's a little different in different regions of the country, but in Michigan we used to say the six best days of the month was half our volume. So it's all about maximizing and when you have the cars, when the weather's right, you've got to be able to get them through. 
And then there's a trained customer base. You really have to train your customers, and we've done that, of course, over 40 years. They actually self-load when it's not a very busy day. We self-load with no attendant out there. And uh, customers don't screw up when they know what they're doing and they do it more often. So creating frequency club customers helps everything. We all know how to go to McDonald's today. We pull in through the right, we look, stop, we go around the back, pick up at the window. That's what you have to be able to get to with a car wash where you have well-trained customers. I'll give you a little bit of a video here that um, just to show you our loading process. This is operating self-loading right now on a pretty busy day. So we have a full queue. And that's about how far apart cars will load themselves on the belt. They're, they're, they never stop. We pull them in, they keep moving, they shift into neutral on the fly. And um, this is about, customers are a little more hesitant. They're gonna space themselves out a little bit more than we like. And uh, this would be self-loading. This is probably how we operate about 80% of the time. Uh, typical midweek day, uh, we're gonna be operating fully self-loading. This is at the Waverly location. The TV tells them stop, put the car in neutral and what wash they're purchasing. And they pull on themselves and it's, uh, it's smooth. It actually is smoother when it's busy, we find, because they're following the leader, they're paying more attention, they're not on their cell phone. You know, there's more cars, they had to wait in line, they know it's busy today, they're gonna try to do things right. And so we have less, uh, less issues when it's busy. And this next video shows you with a loader. So in the same situation on a busy day, we'll put a loader out and we'll pull cars as tight as we can get them. Usually three to four feet apart. We can get them tighter on the belt than you ever could on a chain and roller conveyor. And we get them consistently. So we actually can run the conveyor uh, we run it fast, but we don't have to run it extreme fast like you would on a chain and roller conveyor because we can get the cars tighter consistently and that's what matters most. So here's the belt with a loader and that's about the typical spacing we want cars going through on a busy day. The next fundamental that we believe contributed to the success we call critical density. Yesterday's home runs don't win today's games. And uh, the top and bottom locations here on the map again, back to this, uh, those were home runs back in the day. They still today wash about 200,000 cars each. Uh, and of course, adding the new location at 400,000 cars, that's kind of old standards and um, old news. So, but we believe critical density contributes to this. Sites contribute to each other, they don't take away. Um, now, of course, there's, if you do it enough, you might take away some volume. In this one, of course, we intended to take away volume. We're going to close eventually. And uh, this site, uh, we took about 5%, which was good for us to relieve that one a little bit. And this was up in that year. Um, the quick trip theory, quick trip taught us the, really the principle of critical density. And that when they go into a market, they know how many stores they need to dominate. And they typically won't go into that market until they identify those locations and they can roll out the full uh, rollout to dominate that market. And when they say that when they hit that critical mass, their per store sales would nearly double or dramatic increase. So they want to get to that critical mass level. And I, I believe a little bit in building near yourself before someone else does. I tell people if you're on a busy road and there's no car washes, you know, you want to probably build them three miles apart from each other where you build two sites because if you put them four miles apart, you'll probably find somebody in the middle. So it's good to build a little bit closer than you would think. Um, we also look at that in gas station. You know, we're in the gas, gas business as well. And I look at, you know, there's gas stations on every corner. There's one across the street and you think, well, it'd be silly to own two gas stations across the street from each other. But if he's making money over there, why don't we own that one too? You know, philosophy. So. Uh, brand recognition when you're close, you get that brand as well as the club membership integration where you can have added value for club members. We had a lot of club members when we opened this new location. People were saying, hey, I'm going to wait till the new location's open. And I believe part of what happened is that this site created a lot of new believers. Okay, We had an influx of people. The belt and the building and everything was great. And we had all kinds of new signups. I think 2,000 in the first couple of months we had. And what I think is that some of them backfed into the other locations. So we increased our pie and added new believers and now they're washing at other locations. Infrastructure development is important. Today, this is a hands-on business. Um, we believe, so we, we build a little more upscale facilities, larger, we have more team involved. And at two to three locations, you're at the point you need and, and can have an infrastructure. 
which is an account, a marketing person, uh, and a maintenance person or maintenance team and, and your own truck on the road probably servicing if you need to. That's typically when locations get a little bit older, uh, but some of our locations are older, so we have a maintenance crew. And uh, at that point, you become completely self-sufficient and you can operate with your own infrastructure if you're close together. If you've got sites in Michigan, Florida, and Texas, then that becomes more difficult. A fundamental of obviously one is turning out the, uh, the best uh, clean, shiny, dry result of the car. Customers may forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And the key word there is about the feeling of a clean car. Uh, we believe that it's not the clean car that the person really loves and is going to remember your brand by. It's the feeling the clean car gave them. That's why they came into the wash. To be able to wash clean, shiny, dry at those high speeds, you have to be able to wash back ends. That's one of the hardest things to do. Not all equipment's created equal, so if you're looking and, and working the show floor, you should talk to people and ask questions like that. How fast and ask for proof of how fast you can wash back ends. Shininess of the vehicle, that's a chemistry thing, but it extremely uh, separates the best from the, the average car washes in the country. And customers do notice. Now, they may not be able to explain what they notice, but they can tell there's a difference. And you can see the glow of a vehicle that was, was washed well with the right chemistry. Drying is one of the hardest as well to achieve at these high speeds. And there's exponentially diminishing returns, which is depressing, but basically we say about 80% uh, of your drying is done by, um, or, or the amount of blowers it takes to dry 80%. It's gonna take you that much again to dry the next 15% and, and even more to dry the last 5%. So you have to have the right amount of horsepower and you measure that really in horsepower. Uh, this site has 180 horsepower, 18, 10 horsepower blowers. And also managing muddy, muddy vehicles uh, and club members differently. So today we have to be careful of the customer who's washing every day or a couple times a week, which is pretty common, as well as how we manage a muddy vehicle. We've implemented systems to address the muddy vehicles and wash lightly on club customers and, and more aggressive uh, blasting on, on muddy vehicles. The outcome here, a clean, shiny, dry result, uh, and that's more important to the customer than the price. And that was proven by the ICA did a study several years ago that, uh, that said absolutely the quality outcome is more important than the cost. Our campaign, marketing campaign we ran for quite a while was called Looks Great, Feels Great and trying to attach that mo emotion to the clean, shiny, dry vehicle. The next fundamental is understanding what customers love about your wash. Walt Disney said, do what you do so well that uh, they will want to see it and bring their friends. And we ask our customers for feedback. We wanna know, what do you love about this car wash? The number one answer is always the belt conveyor. It's the loading experience, it's the less intimidating factor. It's not trying to line up with the guide rails and the mirror, and you're taking that drama out of it. So they love the belt conveyor. They also say they love the drying huggers. What's pictured here is a brush that comes in, it kisses the mirror in the side window only. We don't use any on the top of the vehicle because it's too high risk. Out of 2,000 plus cars a day, any smudge or anything on a, on a car that would get caught in there or a dampness built up, you're gonna smear a windshield and it does happen. You would see a mark and it's right in the customer's view and they're gonna be dissatisfied. So we do the tops with heat. You can kind of see in the top left corner and we hit the sides with this brush that kind of hand finished the, uh, the mirror in the side window. We run a consistent speed. We believe customers love that. We don't typically slow down on a slow day. We run consistently fast all the time. They can get in and out quick. They love the bright, spacious environment. You can see in there, and it's a, a clear roof, acrylic roof system we utilize that's gonna make that environment, and customers love that no claustrophobic feeling where they can go through the wash. The inspiration and fun factor, of course, more for the kids, and they have to wash all the time with their club membership program. Um, in the overall experience, safe, bright, but most importantly, low stress and low hassle. It's not dramatic. I'll talk about upsells. We don't really push upsells. We're not, uh, even sometimes we find that uh, when you don't put a loader out, customers will at times load smoother. Uh, they don't want to be watched. They don't want to, if they're intimidated and they're scared, the last thing they want is somebody seeing them screw up. So we place our staff, when we are self-loading, they're in a place we call the flight deck and they're right behind the glass 
And they can jump out there if need be, but they're monitoring actively, keeping an eye on it, but they're not standing right there telling the customer what to do. So it's a low stress environment. The next fundamental, uh, marketing. Market hard, sell soft. Again, we don't push up sales uh, very hard, but we do hard marketing. Great companies show it in their marketing. Professional franchise look in our branding, that's not true in most mom and pop car washes today. Uh, unfortunately, the standards are too low, I believe, for professionalism in marketing uh, at the car washes. Uh, marketing from the grand opening through social media and professionally responding and, and promptly responding to customers. Brand development, uh, no pushy upsells. And there's also economies of scale of marketing. So in this small town where we have four locations, we're able to run TV commercials, do couponing, and it contributes to the greater whole, back to that value of critical density there. People, an obvious fundamental of a successful uh, car wash. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. In the express model, we usually have about three people working the facility. We believe that um, we like this business model. It's a little bit more of an upscale express wash. I'd call this above average in size. We have the ability to pay people well uh, by having a large enough business. This isn't a 110 foot small shoebox car wash. We can have three people at a time manage the location. It's a large enough business also to have roles and job descriptions and a large enough business to have returns for two people. And a client of ours just told me a few months ago that uh, he's got actually one of our smaller facilities we call a mini and said, hey, it's, it's taking care of me and my uh, partner, uh, two guys that invested in the business together. And so that's a great ability or a reason to have a little bit more of an upscale car wash to create better returns. Uniforms are mandatory. It's a simple fundamental, but it seems very much overlooked and, and people trip over $500 and miss millions in uh, the professionalism of your brand and your look and career standards is really what you're implying to your team that this is important and that they have again a job description here and they're not just a cashier they are a career person at this car wash and we provide places for them to work up through the ranks and become managers night managers assistant managers regional directors all that kind of thing so uh, we want to make sure that they perceive it that way. And also with that, we do multiple interviews and qualification. And we also run a predictive index system of qualifying our team. Um, you know, interviews is something that, um, uh, you know, I always say easy come, easy go. So we never hire somebody on the spot typically. And uh, multiple interviews are better. Make sure you feel confident in multiple people interviewing and filtering out the uh, team. Uh, I think it was Google that does 17 interviews minimum or something like that. And it's odds are somebody's not going to walk away so easily from a job they had to go through 17 interviews to get. So a little bit of it's a um, you know, barrier to entry. And even if we know we're going to hire somebody after the first interview, we'll do two or three anyway. Uh, again, to make it that this is a real career, please take it seriously. We have a face-to-face -face, uh, cashier window, obvious standard in all retail businesses, again, except ours. Um, it's, it, it creates a, uh, a fixed position. Again, that's great for the customer consistency. They're not roaming the lot with a handheld in different place next time than they were last time. So the, the cashier window, that's what people are used to. That's really the standard, uh, a drive through window. So we use that in conjunction with auto tellers. So we do all the options simultaneously in a best of all worlds here. I believe when you kind of answer questions about how the wash operates, Equipment should deliver the product, people deliver the experience. So in the wash, we make decisions using that logic. Again, we don't want to ever prep the car. That's actually delivering the service the customer paid for. That should be done with the equipment. We would never hand towel the car. That has to be done with the equipment. We want everything that delivers the product to the customer automated. Now, it doesn't mean we have to cut labor. We can still have the same amount of labor, but we'll utilize them in the vacuum center to greet customers. How is your wash today? And to work the property also, sometimes we'll do, when we start up, we'll do pre-selling up front to um, explain the process, explain the belt, things like that. We want to not necessarily have to be uh, extremely low labor, but a three-person operation and people can be free to deliver an experience. Another fundamental is smart design. The details are not the details, they make the design. Uh, and this is, again, a little bit of a failure in most uh, car washes today because an architect designed the car wash probably in most cases and architects really don't know anything about an optimized car wash layout and facility within the facility and walls and windows and things like that. 
A few things we integrate, we call the ease of turning left. It's easier to turn left than it is right, so we always enter the wash with a left-hand turn, just like any fast food restaurant. We never uh, avoid mazes. If you see a site plan that looks like a maze, we steer clear. We don't, don't want to have a maze for the customer. Team members are always stationed on the driver's side of the vehicle. If a customer has a problem, they roll their window down, they need assistance, you want the uh, customer on the driver's side, or we call the flight deck there. Equipment controls, we want line of sight. If it's something we're going to adjust in the wash, like tips for dilution, regulators, gauges, uh, all line of sight uh, in what we call a pod in the wash bay. We worry about things like light transitioning. That was where the clear roof came from. Years ago, we used to use canopies to darken the outside and transition, but if you go from a bright to a dark car wash, you get uh, blinded almost for a second where you can't see. So slopes, we are very critical about slopes. Uh, today we actually try to get the slope to match the speed of the belt. So if we're running a shorter tunnel where we're gonna run a slower belt speed, we'll diminish the downhill slope in a little bit. If we're running fast, we'll have a little bit more slope and we try to match the slope that the customer is gonna roll at to the speed that the conveyor is moving to make the smoothest transition. The flight deck is about proximity to the loading area and integrating both form and function in everything that we do. So the vacuum system on the bottom, we'd always have two hoses, one on each side of the car. You have to have that for convenience. Um, a vending machine we have on every stall and uh, it's designed to have function but as well as a, a sexy clean look. Smart design we've integrated in the last few years into the back room and other pieces of equipment where we're trying to pre-plumb and pre-wire things. We can reduce the scope of the field team like the electricians and the plumbers, we can save money. We can do it consistently for the same price more efficiently than trying to train electricians and plumbers and especially in different types of car washes. So we do more in-house and avoid reinventing the wheel. Some intangible values that I can't define, but they're things that are fundamentals of washing this amount of cars, we'll call the intangibles. If you want something new, you have to stop doing something old. This picture here is the view from the cashier. They have full control over everything on the property. The top is truck bed cameras. Uh, on the left, uh, next screen down is a mirror of their lane two screen. It's a touch screen. They can touch it and interact with what the customer is doing. The next one is lane three monitoring, the controller, push button station, and their cash register. They can run everything from the flight deck. Other intangibles are manageability of the operation, having doors and windows in the right spot. So when you got to run from here to there, there's a door in the middle. Automation and features, we have things like what we call the pause button here that allows us to slow the conveyor down. Um, the belt's electric drive so we can ramp the VFD to a crawl. If we want to clean out a pickup bed or we, our customer rolls the window down, we can pause it, take care of it, and hit start to speed it right back up. But um, that makes it so the customers in the tunnel don't even know if they stop. The brushes keep going, soap keeps spraying. On the left, uh, line of sight control we run on the iPad system for timing and function control and little intangibles like speakers on the vacuums to create that ambience in the environment. On the top right here we've incorporated, we kind of took from Quick Trip a stand-up manager's office instead of having a room with a sit-down desk. So they stand up and they're facing both cars loading as well as the area where a customer would approach. If somebody was coming from the vacuums, they'd be coming in that way and the manager can catch them. Uh, before they approach the inside the wash. The control console in the bottom right corner allows us full functions of the control system and push button overrides with a full view through the tunnel down to the end of the, of the wash. It, intangibles to, to talk about, especially on the show floor, different equipment again is not created equal. Um, today we've achieved 34 gallons total uh, per car water usage and we'd get to about 20 at our new site with Reclaim. And we do that because we, we don't use Reclaim excessively. We use it to conserve water. We usually be below the door handle only. Um, and we don't ever mix Reclaim with soaps. Uh, so that's not always possible, but that's in the perfect world, 34 gallons and 20. Understand that soap is a system and chemistry is one of the hardest things to achieve. We say about, of getting a clean, shine, dry vehicle, 50% of its chemistry. So you can do everything right with your equipment package, and if your chemistry is not right, you're not going to have a good car. Electrical efficiency, again, there's differences in, in uh, equipment manufacturers. Today we've created timing perfection by using the iPad. We can be very precise in our timing of functions where nothing comes on early, nothing comes on too late. If I see something a couple feet too early or a couple feet too late, I look at that and say, that's 
percent of the vehicle lane. That's a five percent annual return on investment you're losing uh, just by a couple feet of accuracy. Um, advanced functions as well today in the control systems where they stagger start motors, things like that, create efficiencies. There's a new factor. Um, you know, I don't think that today we could take our old washes. It would be difficult to wash 400,000 cars. So there is something about the newness of this facility we built. Um, I don't know how to, to replicate that other than just building new places. And I guess that's kind of the quick trip model where they tear down old ones and build new ones. And McDonald's has led us all in that uh, logic of, hey, this place is old and inefficient, so let's tear it down and start over. Um, that's difficult to swallow. Uh, we struggle with it in our own company, but with a wash that's paid off and how do we uh, go to tear it down and, and build a new one. But it's certainly a factor in how we achieve the 400,000 cars. Location. Try not to find yourself 500 feet from a profit. That's uh, a quote by Brian Hoban. Um, site selection. It's two things again. Analytics and emotion. We can do the analytics all day long. Um, we have to feel good about the site. This particular location, which is the Waverly site, we've owned for about 15 years, so we were kind of committed already. I don't think we looked at any demographics or traffic flow. It's our hometown, we know it, and we just built it, and we felt good about it. Um, often, we have to follow the analytics and, uh, and study the traffic counts. I always ask the question, who are you bidding against? If the lot's been for sale for two years and it's a good price, it's probably not the right site. So if you're bidding against a Chick-fil-A or a Walgreens or a McDonald's, you're probably looking at the right location. Certainly not the cheapest location. If you got a deal on it, again, it's it, beware. Think about amortization when it comes to site selection. Uh, if it's a couple hundred thousand dollars to get a better site and you have two options, um, you do the numbers over 30 years and you figure out how many cars a day that is, it's next to nothing and you're certainly going to wash that many more cars and have a bigger success. I always like to follow somebody bigger. I don't know uh, everything, not much when it comes to, to that, so I like to follow a uh, Home Depot or a Lowe's or a grocery store chain or any other big box. Uh, they have um, you know, much smarter people on the payroll figure that out and they have a lot more mistakes. So it's usually pretty safe to follow somebody like that. I always trust the local residents more than myself. I can come to an area and think it site's good, and the guy who lives there says, no, no, that's a, that's, that area is dying. That's a bad area. Don't, you don't want to be over in that side of town. And um, so, you know, it's hard for us to judge sites. You have to feel it, and, and most of our clients bring sites to us. Um, an interesting thing, you know, we've all been hammered in our heads, location, location, location. But I will argue that the product is greater than the location. And um, often, if you put a in-bay automatic, for example, on an A site, it's not gonna wash 210 cars an hour or 400,000 cars a year. Uh, it's the wrong product. And so that, that can really harm it. And I got this understanding from our local hometown. We had a, a Ruby Tuesdays restaurant. It was built on, uh, it was a B, B plus site maybe, it was okay. They ran it through two, three years probably, closed it, went out of business. Somebody came in, built a Buffalo Wild Wings. Today it's a jamming Buffalo Wild Wings on the same property. People will find it when the product is the right product. We have a site evaluation tool you can leverage on our website to try to take some of the emotion out of it and analyze different key, about 16 different indicators. Another fundamental is the model. All failure is failure to adapt. All success is successful adaptation. There's really three models today we see in the industry, Express, Flex, and Gas Wash C-Store. The Express exterior only, the Flex has an interior cleaning center option with it, the Gas Wash C-Store integrated with the gas. You wanna pick a site that matches your market. If it's a Flex Serve market, you probably maybe wanna do a Flex Serve or maybe you do the opposite, but uh, a gas station, some places are known for Gas Wash C-Store integrated sites, so maybe that's a good fit. Also, what matches the location. Maybe if there is a lot of flexes around, you want to build an express. Most importantly, the site that matches you. If you don't like dealing with people, don't build a flex serve wash. And an express wash is very much automated and kind of low excitement sometimes. So if you like excitement and energy and working with people, express can be a little bit um, machine, uh, you know, automatic. And anticipate the future, certainly increasing labor costs, so the flex is a little bit of a negative there. A business system, 
all retail businesses today utilize a business system. If you want to be successful, find someone who has achieved the results you wanted, copy what they do, and you'll achieve the same results. Virtually every retail business today, and there's a risk in going alone, not leveraging a business system is risky. That means things like operation manuals, process and procedures, training systems, the marketing and the brand trust that's built within a brand. I do believe this is the ultimate business. For many years, I warned people that it's difficult, uh, it's highly mechanical, you have to be aware of that. Uh, but then I realized, you know what? Dealing with machinery is predictable. You can manage it, you can do preventative maintenance, and it's certainly easier than dealing with people. You just have to get good at it and know what you're getting into. Uh, people are a little more unpredictable. Uh, we believe this more talented, skilled labor, again, not minimum wage labor. Transformational product you can see. This is exciting because changing oil, you don't really excite the customer and you can't excite yourself. And we have oil changes, but you know, it's not something that you can transform. Feeding somebody is a necessity. It's not really fun to have food. You give somebody food, they're fed, but you can't really see the transformation and it's something they had to do. The car wash is a great business because we can see, we take a car in dirty, we bring it out clean, the customer's happy and smiling, and it's something that's gratifying for everybody. And it's also something they didn't have to do, so they're not bitter about it like getting their oil changed. They're excited to get their car washed. A medium ticket is a nice price point. We're not a dollar store with no margins and we're not doing million dollar construction projects with liabilities and attorneys and things like that. A price, a car wash is the ultimate uh, average ticket there. Recession proof, many say, low risk of disruption. It's a service business instead of a, a sales business is great. Assets and real estate are great. Uh, no food for legal reasons, of course, and a low labor. I wanna focus on the goal and the outcome of lifestyle and being fulfilled. It's a picture of my family. I just wanted to remind myself to understand the outcome. And it's not just work family balance, but having a business that you dare to leave. And not all car washes are like that. I've talked to a client who has just been open three months and he said, hey, I can leave this place for a week. I love it, it's great, I'm confident. I've, I know people who've been in the business 20 years and scared to leave their place to come to the show. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And remember, it's not about making the most money. If you make a lot of money, but you don't have free time, what's it really worth? ROI and cash flow heavy business, uh, significant business is not necessarily cheap. Sustainable and longevity is important in the equipment simplicity a business with an impact and something you can leave as a legacy as well as an exit strategy. And we believe that the industry is ready for a franchise. We think that we, we kind of looked at all these fundamentals and said, how do we achieve this 400,000 cars? And you look at all this stuff, we said, this is stupid. Every other retail business today has executed this stuff. It's the standard. And I go to these different shows of real estate development and franchise development and everybody gets it but yet we're very fragmented and independent. So we believe it's time to franchise and with that we've put together over the last year a program called Tommy's Express.